let's talk about the concept of sliming in test-driven development. Sliming is also known as fake it till you make it, but here I'll refer to it as sliming. I want to talk about it from three aspects. Firstly, that it helps you to achieve and maintain flow. Secondly, that it helps you increase test coverage. And thirdly, that it potentially helps you reach better production code. Let's take them one by one. But before we do that, let's first define sliming so that we know that we are talking about the same thing. Sliming is when you are in test-driven development, instead of writing an intelligent implementation, you write the simplest implementation possible, which oftentimes mean that you return hard-coded values. So if you have a unit test that says that a particular method should return, say, the number two, then you hard code the value number two, even though you may actually know what the correct implementation of the method should be. And then you keep on doing this until it becomes easier to write the actual implementation than to fake a result. Hence the name, fake it till you make it. And I guess sliming, the word sliming comes because you sort of input a slimy implementation. You're not inputting the real implementation, you're just sticking some gluey slime in between to make sure that the test passes. Of course, this sounds completely bonkers, and you might say, but why would anybody ever do this? And this is why I want to talk about the three reasons. So the first reason is flow, perhaps the most trivial reason also. But that reason essentially has to do with the idea that in the TDD cycle, in other words, the red-green refactor cycle, you want to keep a fast pace. And because of that, people then argue that sliming helps you to achieve that initial momentum and not get stuck thinking about the details of the perfect implementation. But again, I don't really consider this the most important reason. So let's move on to number two. The second reason is the argument that it supposedly helps you increase test coverage. Remember, test coverage is how much of your code is covered by tests. The reason it increases test coverage is that it forces you to write new test cases. Because you are not allowed to input the actual implementation, or quotation marks, the real implementation, before it becomes easier than sliming the code, then you have to keep writing test cases until you're forced into that position. Which in this case is a really good thing, because that means you get more tests covering more scenarios and hopefully more edge cases of the thing you are testing. And this reason, I would argue, is compelling enough to argue that when you are doing test-driven development, you should be sliming. To slime is to write the simplest implementation possible and not just write one silly use case and then input the real implementation. That does not necessarily give you a lot of security. But as a way of segueing into the third reason, consider the fact that I've been using the terminology the real implementation. Notice the quotation marks. The third reason is given by Robert C. Martin, also known as Uncle Bob. And I have to be honest with you, I need to do some more thinking before I can claim that I fully understand his opinion, which is why I'm gonna point you towards his video. But if I understand the gist of it, which I think I do, then if true, then what he's implying is really profound. I think he's implying that if you do sliming, and if you follow a particular set of rules when sliming, you will incrementally move towards better algorithms. Notice that this is not about writing better tests. It's not about increasing code coverage. It's not about achieving some kind of flow. It's about actually producing better code. So if this is true, I have to say that that's quite profound. So that's it. Those were the three points. I hope you now have a better idea of why it could potentially be useful to perform sliming when you're doing test-driven development. Let's recap. One, it can help you achieve flow in the red-green refactor cycle. Two, it helps you increase code coverage without even thinking about it. And finally, three, there are those who argue that doing sliming can actually help you reach better production code, which is why I highly recommend you to check out the Bob Martin talk linked in the show notes. So that's it for today. As usual, be sure to hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or angry outrages. And beyond that, be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss the next episode.